Welcome back, everyone. Frank DeMore here, giving you the news, connecting that news with Bible prophecy in these last days. I have a lot to cover, so I'm going to go right into it. Very, very briefly, I'll let you read the scripture. It's right here. You'll see it in the Old Testament. Zechariah warns that our generation would be facing this constant call or the burden of Jerusalem. We know this because the Lord told us in the last days all the people of the earth are going to be gathering against it, against the Jews, against Jerusalem. And anybody who did this, obviously the Lord tells us in the scripture that they're going to be cut into pieces. So it's not good to take a position against the Jews and against Jerusalem, God's holy city. But anybody who does that, you better be ready to get the consequences because God has warned us anybody who did this, they would be destroyed. Also, not just in Zechariah 12, 2 and 3, but also in Joel chapter 3, verse 2, where it talks about anyone who divides the land. The Lord is going to lead them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat, which is destruction. So, two major uh, places where the Lord shows us what's going to happen to the people who come against Israel in the last days. Now, knowing that, I've been telling you that Barack Obama may sound really good. May sound like uh, if you listen to the speech tonight uh, on one of the uh, national or international news organizations, you're going to hear the speech today that Barack Obama gave in Jerusalem to the Israelis. It's going to sound really, really good, but if you don't, if you don't know the Word of God, you're going to be misled thinking that, yeah, he sounds really good and we should back him up, but what he is doing is the exact opposite of what God said uh, to do. Now, a lot of people don't like this because they're saying, well, we should all call for peace and safety, and yes, we should. Uh, but destroying a nation by dividing up that nation, because that's exactly what would happen if they did divide that land, but obviously we know that the Lord told us that Israel is not going to be destroyed. As a matter of fact, he's going to fight for the nation of Israel. But what I've been showing people for ever since Barack Obama was placed in the office is that this man is the first president who has gone out of his way to be contentious with Israel's leader. And the leader that I'm talking about is Benjamin Netanyahu. So just to show you how far advanced People are picking up on this. Even the liberal press is picking up on this. The contention between uh, the nation of Israel and the United States. Even though, as I said in that speech, you're going to hear Barack Obama say, you know, that we're the best friends and we're always going to be there. But everything that he has done up until this point shows that he hasn't been there. And you'll see a lot of my documentation if you go back into my into my post and you read how much money Barack Obama has given Egypt and how much money he's taken away from Israel's military. The proof speaks for itself. Watch this as the liberal press tells you the contentions. Let me move this back a little bit for you. I'll just give you the highlight of it and point it out for you. When he first took office against Jewish settlements were a real obstacle and then, of course, the president backed down, and that was an awkward moment for the Palestinians, leaving them in the lurch. So uh, nobody, uh, none of the independent critics uh, would say that the, the White House has not bungled this relationship, but a lot of people put blame on the Israeli side as well. It's gotten off on the wrong foot, and they're trying to fix it, but it is one of the worst relationships I can remember, and I've covered every president going all the way back to Ronald Reagan. Uh there you go. The worst ever since Ronald Reagan. So that's just giving you an insight of the road that we're on. What's that road? Obviously, all the nations coming against Israel. You'll see it. By the end of the day, the United States is not going to back up uh, Israel. Israel's going to be fending alone. They're going to have to take care of themselves. We know this from, obviously, from the Ezekiel chapter 38 war, where God has to fight for the nation of Israel. Now, as I was telling you why they're calling for peace and safety, keep your eyes and your ears open because you're going to see more rockets being poured in uh, to Israel. 
Now, after the last conflict, which took place about six months ago, when Israel again had to go in and stop the rockets that were being fired in, into Israel, I told you that there would be a ceasefire, and that ceasefire would uh, be broken when the Gaza would start throwing in or lobbing in these rockets again, and that's exactly what took place. The report rocket hit Israel, Obama meeting Pal or meets Palestinians. So while Barack Obama went over there, and he's still over there, uh, we see these rockets that are being sent over again by the Palestinians. And this is a man who's trying to separate uh, Israel. This is the man who's trying to give the borders back to Israel, which would mean those 67 borders, if they gave them back to the Palestinians, uh, the buffer zone to stop the fire, to uh, advance into these enemies that are shooting the rockets would disappear. And uh, there's no way that that's going to happen. The Israeli government is not going to give that buffer, buffer zone away. Now, according to this, I'm going to give it a highlight. The Palestinians want a state on the West Bank, Gaza, and East Jerusalem. As I said, Jerusalem was going to be the major focal point in the last days, like Zechariah pointed out. And that's what we see almost every single day in some paper around the world. So the Gaza and East Jerusalem terrorist, or territories, Israel captured a 1967 war, but are ready for minor adjustments to accommodate some settlements closest to Israel. Since 1967, Israel has built dozens of settlements in the West Bank and East Jerusalem that are now home to 560,000 Israelis, an increase of 60,000 since Obama became president four years ago. This is what Obama hates. He hates the fact that Israel is not stopping construction in territory that is supposed to be the Palestinian territory. And he's asking him to give this land up. Israel can't afford to give it up. This is one of the reasons why I believe that the peace process will fall away, it will fall apart, the sudden destruction will come because of the, this issue with the 1967 borders that were lost and the ownership of East Jerusalem. Now, after that article came out, there was another article that, and there's a YouTube video that you'll be able to watch that more rockets were fired in again today. Four more of these rockets were uh, cast in to Israel. So Israel now is going to have to make some kind of response. They always make a response. This is going to happen, uh, whether it's going to happen while Barack Obama is there. They may wait until he leaves the area uh, for security reasons, but Israel will respond to the rocket attacks. Keep in mind, the Gaza militants, the Hezbollah, want to destroy Israel. They are not going to give up until they get the land back and East Jerusalem. Of course, we know that that's not going to happen because Psalm 83 shows us who is going to uh, come against Israel. We know Israel's still standing. As a matter of fact, they're still standing to fight an even larger war, the Ezekiel War, as I already showed you. Now, we do know concerning the call for peace and safety, a very, very specific prophecy that points to the last generation. And it, all I have to do, really, is to give you this one prophecy, because the, this is what the Lord showed us. When they're calling for the peace and safety, sudden destruction is going to come. He didn't say here, when they're calling for peace and safety, there would be peace. It was the exact opposite. And so... The speech that I saw Barack Obama give today was no doubt in part and parcel fulfillment of the very words that Christ told Paul to write to us about the call for peace and safety. Now, I only took out some of the excerpts from the, uh, the, the speech today. I put them in red, but take a look. I'm going to emphasize this again. When you hear, okay, when they shall say, peace and safety, now take a look. You're going to be able to go click the whole entire uh, speech, but I'm just showing you. Here you go, peace, security and peace, 
security, peace, peace, security, peace, 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 security, peace, security. What part of the message that Christ has given to you about the call for peace and safety do you not understand? Are you the kind of person who's going to have to wait to see the sudden destruction? You may be. But at least you'll have it in your mind what the Lord said and what's actually going on so that when you see it, the Lord will bring back into remembrance the call for peace and security. Knowing that when you saw it, his hand is on the door and he's coming back. So get ready. Now, one of the other articles that I want to point out, Abbas eager to resume the talks. Now, why is this important? And here's another one that I'm going to be putting out. I'm not even going to go to it because I have the link for you. I'll just give you the gist of what they're doing here. Now, Abbas is eager to get the, the talks resumed. And this becomes important. Let me scroll back up here. Because look at this. It says, when they shall say peace and safety, sudden destruction come upon them, right? So, it says, when they say peace and safety, they haven't been calling for peace and safety for two years. The peace process has been stalled. So if you want to say that there was a law in the birth pains from that we see in Mark 13, 8, where the Lord said the birth pains of the last days, then we saw that there was just a time of space where there was a letdown of the intensity of these birth pangs of calling for peace and safety. Those two years seem to be passed, so we're looking now at another uh, moment of increased birth pangs. Now, since Obas is eager to sit down and talk about this, and we see that the land issue is at the forefront, we're going to see shortly something happen uh, that is going to stop the peace process. But the major point is this. They're talking about peace and safety again since the last past two years. Now is a critical time because now when they're calling for peace and safety, that's what the Lord told us and they're doing it right now and that is the most important part. Now the headline reads, Obama Assad must go. What's so important about this? Well, if you read... Psalm 83, you'll see that Syria is involved in this war against Israel in the last days. Now, by the President of the United States saying Assad must go, something is going to happen in the Middle East that causes Syria uh, to come down in alliance with these nations that they're having problems with right now. Right? They're, Syria is having problems with Lebanon. They've been fighting over there. But something is going to happen to unite all of these nations, including Syria. And so if somebody tries to take Syria out like international forces or Barack Obama, it just may backfire and cause all of these nations of Psalm 83 to hit Israel because uh, Assad has said, and I showed you this a couple days ago, you can go back on my site and look at this, that he warned that if international forces would come, he would attack Israel. So it becomes imperative to watch what's going on with Assad, especially now that we know other news, and I didn't post this today, that Syria did use chemical weapons against their people. And knowing that, the Israeli government said if they saw this, that they would strike Syria. So in the background, we may be seeing the Israelis preparing to strike Syria. And if that would happen, no doubt that it would even be a better scenario, if you want to say better, a better scenario or a more likely scenario that would cause the Psalm 83 war. Because if Israel went in against their enemy and all the rest of their brothers saw that they were really doing damage to them, they could join together. All right, now, in reference to Iran, because Iran is in the news again today. We see Iran in the Ezekiel War. And Iran is a satellite nation to all of these nations. They've been feeding them arms, feeding them uh, money, feeding them uh, all their, even troops, small troops that are going in there, rockets and mortars. 
But Iran is the nation who has been pronouncing the most the destruction of the nation of Israel, along with all of these other nations as well. But uh, Barack Obama uh, mentions this quite a bit, and he mentioned it in the speech today about Ahmadinejad calling for the destruction of the nation of Israel. So in this article, when you go to the BBC News today, there was a brigadier general that was talking about, and I'm going to give you the meat of the article, can you, uh, can you believe what Israel's prime minister says that he said he was going to attack Iran if nobody did anything? And they talk about there was two options here. You'll see that. One of the options was to keep talking, uh, and that option is exhausted. The, the, the nations of the world have been boycotting the Iranians uh, over this nuclear site. It hasn't worked for five years. I told people five years ago, it's not going to work. They're not going to stop trying to get this bomb. That option has died out. Now, there's the other option, and that other option is to take action. And this is what they're talking about. And when he says, then he will prefer the second, he's talking about, well, if the first option of talking didn't work, they would strike. And what they're telling him is he's not bluffing. He's going to do it. How do we know that? Well, he gave the same message to Iraq and Syria. They didn't listen. He acted. And you're going to see the same thing here if nobody stops him. And so far, that's not going to happen. At least none of the, none of the nations have made physical moves uh, to take out those nuclear facilities. Now, I'm going to go into a complete different prophecy now, and this is going to be very interesting, I guarantee it. The Lord told us in the last days, the generation who was going to be here on this planet during the tribulation would be going through food crisis. How do we know that? Take a look at Revelation 6.6. 6. And I behold a voice, or held a voice, in the middle of the four beasts say, a measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And what the Lord is showing us here, that people are going to have to work all day long for a quart of wheat, and when it's in reference to barley, it would be a little bit more than that, but it's only enough for one person, and that meal is good for only one meal, it's not going to feed a complete family. It's only for one person. So we know there's going to be a food crisis in the last days. Now, when you read Revelation chapter 13, Revelation, I'm going to connect the dots here for you. Revelation chapter 13 deals with the false prophet and also this antichrist person who will be marking everybody on the foreheads or their hands. Anybody who takes this, we're going to end up in hell. A lot of people don't like the concept of hell, but that's a whole different matter. But Jesus talked about hell more than anybody in the Bible. And so the man, the false prophet, who will look like a man of God, but he will be a wolf in a lamb's uh, or sheep's disguise, what do we know about him? Well, Revelation chapter 13, verse 11 and through 15. Look at this. And I behold another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had... Uh, two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon, and he exercises all the power of the first beast before him. In other words, the Antichrist. That's who he is uh, talking about here. And causes the earth and them which dwell therein or worship the first beast. So the, the false prophet is going to obviously get the people around the world to worship the first beast who's the antichrist whose deadly wound was healed now there's going to be an assassination attempt on the antichrist it, obviously it's going to hit his head uh and you'll know this by other scriptures in in the uh, in the bible but this man is not going to die he's not he's not going to this, this is not resurrection like jesus did this is going to be some some a scam and he does great wonders 
And so, now the, obviously the Antichrist and the false prophet are going to do great wonders. We see it right here. So that he maketh fire come down from heaven on earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth men, or deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had the power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by the sword, and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Now, false prophet comes east on the scene. He connects with this false with the false messiah, which would be the Antichrist. Now the question to ask about this is this. When you get down to Revelation chapter 13, verses 16 through 18, I'm going to read this and then give you the question that you should be posing. All right. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich or poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, that no man might buy or sell, say he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is a number of a man, and his number is six hundred and three score six. Now here's the question that I would like to pose to you. Why would the false prophet and the Antichrist team up together? Obviously we see that in the scriptures. Well, they're teaming up together to bring this mark on the whole world. How are they going to do that? Well, obviously they're going to come together together this mark is going to stop people from buying or selling. And so we know because of the food crisis, no doubt are they going to have control of the food supplies. Now, I don't have it here, but Revelation chapter 18, verse 8. There will be a limited food supply on earth. We know this because we see the famines and the droughts that the Lord talks about. And then in Revelation chapter 6, verses 5 and 6, we do see the, the food being controlled, or rationing, if you will. Rationing the nations. How they do this? Well, obviously, it's going to be done through the mark of the beast. You're not going to be able to buy anything or even sell anything. And it will be all done under the guise of security, a guise of taking care of humanity. It's all going to be a rouge. Just a way of controlling the people. Well, obviously, in Revelation chapter 13, verses 16 through 18, you can control the masses by giving them food. If you have a shortage of food, obviously, that we see happening during the tribulation period, Revelation 6 6. If you control the ration of food and you tell the people of the earth, we'll give you the food. If you follow our religion, and so they would have a monopoly on this, and people who wouldn't want to die, they would take the mark so that they can eat. I hope you're seeing the connection here. So, that is the connection between, part of the connection between the false prophet and the Antichrist who will be coming together, no doubt controlling uh, the world and Am I just blowing steam, or is there evidence of this? Well, take a look at this. I'm going to connect the dots. There's an article that came out today, Tensions Run High as Egypt Trails or Trials Bread Rationing Plan. Let me go to that article. Take a look at this. Egypt's Ministers on Tuesday announced convert controversial plans to introduce a smart card system that limits the amount of subsidized bread citizens can buy. Are you seeing what's happening here? And don't think that this is the first place that this is happening or going to happen. 
They are going to control the food. The world leaders are in the mix. They are already preparing to control and rationing the food. You get a world leader on the scene, you get the Pope, you get the Antichrist together, making it look like they're working for humanity by rationing out all of this food and you can't get involved in it unless you take the mark. Are you getting the picture here? Now this isn't it. The only, I'm going to give you some more. The government would start rationing after two months, Supply Minister Basham Olo told Rutgers earlier this week. And besides cutting subsidies, the severe economic crisis has forced the Islamic-led government to introduce rationing. You're seeing the beginning stages of this. Let me show you something else. Go back to my site. Now, here's, you're going to have all the links to here. Here's the headline. President can now seize control of all U.S. food production. Look at this. Let me just read it for you, and then we're going to go down here. On Friday, March 16, 2012, President Barack Obama signed an executive order that asserts his authority to take over all food resources in the nation, so long as it is done to promote the national defense under both emergency and non-emergency conditions. It doesn't even have to be emergency. Can that qualif or qualifying phrase be any more am ambiguous? Obama has claimed this authority for himself and all future presidents based on the fact that the president is commander-in-chief of all U.S. military. Essentially, this means that should that the president ever deem it a, a, a matter of national defense, the U.S. government can now forcibly claim control of all property held, get this, crops, food we're talking about, seeds. If you don't have seeds, you can't plant. If you can't plant, you don't get crops, farm, equipment, and livestock. Are you understanding what's happening? And according to this article that I read, it even says, if you think I'm exaggerating, read the executive order, which I have right here. I'm not going to put it up here. I'm going to get you involved. I'm going to let you do a little work. You read the executive order. It's not, it's not something that we made up. It's an order, executive order. Now look at this. If that's not bad enough, the UN seeks sweeping power to control your food. Are you seeing the connection between the false prophet and the Antichrist? You can't buy or sell. If you can control the food, you control the masses. You control the, everyone. And that's exactly what they're trying to do. Let me go down to this article. UN seeking or seeks sweeping power to control the water. It says, a new report suggests that the United Nations take control of the world's food and water. We'd write this off as a joke, except the Obama administration seems to like the idea of global government. This is essentially what we read in Revelation chapter 13, global government giving, issuing to everyone this mark. Now, I want you to take a look at this. There's another article that came out. Oklahoma House passes bill to ban the UN Agenda 21. What is Agenda 21? If you don't know, please click the link. It will tell you exactly what Agenda 21 is because Agenda 21 is a movement to take over your property, to take over your food, and to control you by these means. Controlling your every existence, if you will. Take the guns, take the food, take the seeds. Control. That's what Agenda 21 is. Now, Look at this. UN Agenda 21's 40 chapters outline human activities and decisions that are not sustainable passed on environmental impact on global land use, global education, and global population control and reduction. 
they're saying is there's too many people on the planet. They want to control it. How are you going to control it? You stop them from eating, <laughs> you control a large mass of the population. Now the family unit, farming, commercial, agriculture, livestock, pesticides, herbicides, grazing cattle, irrigation, paved roads, private property, fossils, fuels, golf courses, ski lodges. I mean, it goes on and on and on. Dams, reservoir, fences, and power lines. Now, if you want to read the entire uh, agenda of the 21, just go to the site down here. I'm going to bring it up for you. There it is. You'll be able to read. Introduction, just scroll down because this gives you all the information that you're going to ever need and uh, you better read it because this is what they're already doing. It's already in the works. And eventually it's going to uh, bring us where? It's going to bring us to what the Lord showed us in the last days. The mark of the beast, control, world government, can't buy, can't sell. Now, speaking of the one world government, if you look in my book, you're going to find out that they've come up with all different kinds of technologies. Technologies that would be able to mark you. Let me bring this up here. and You can get this in my book if you just tuned in here. Just click this link. When you get to my website, the book will download for you today. You better read chapter one of my book because I outline device after device that can be implanted in your skin in this generation who will stop you from deducting anything from your account unless you had this chip. This is the technology that only one generation could have had. And that's the generation that God spoke about in Daniel chapter 12, the increased generation knowledge. All different types of these uh, technologies that will cause people to be marked. Tattoos, invisible tattoos. You'll see little devices like this and the dust, the dust tags, RFID dust tags that came out of Japan. Miniature, minuscule, that can track everybody. It, it's just, we don't have to wait for it anymore. It's already here. Now, in relation to the, the kingdom that the Antichrist will come from, the Lord showed us in Daniel chapter 2, for example, who the last empire would be. Daniel was told a list, given a list of these major world powers, empires, one after another, until all the way to the time of the end when the revived Roman Empire would be here and ten toes of this revived Roman Empire would give all their power over to the Antichrist. This now is a map of the European Union. The exact nations that used to be in the old Roman Empire. These are the western leg of the old Roman Empire. You see it right here. Now in the scriptures we see the Lord giving us some insight about the revived Roman Empire. What does he tell us? Take a look at this. I'm going to get this out of the way. In Daniel chapter 2, verse 41 through 43, there's a warning about them not mixing well. And whereas thou soft iron mixed with Murray clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. So we know that there's going to be many, many people who will be coming together in this empire. The empire would have problems. And because of those problems, what does the Lord tell us? They're not going to hold together. Now the European Union in the year 2000 came out with their own currency. 17 nations of the European Union have been using that currency. And they were very, very powerful in the beginning, wiping out America's dollar. But over the last three or four years, they've been in turmoil, huge turmoil, and they're showing the cracks separating or possibly dividing into different sections. Now, will the different sections end up with the ten toes? 
I think that's something that we need to be watching for. But we do know from the news that's happening right now in today, Cyprus, one of the areas in this Western European Union, is about ready to collapse, going into bankruptcy. And if you don't think this kind of bankruptcy would uh, affect your nation, whether wherever you are, you got to be mistaken. Because what's going on in Cyprus went on in Greece, it's going on in Italy, in Spain, in Portugal, one after another, they're dealing with possible bankruptcies. And according to this article, Cyprus only has a matter of, if it's a 24-hour period, I believe, or less. And of course, there's a video that talks about it and shows you panic that the Cyprus people are, are running on the banks and they had to close the banks down. Does this sound familiar? This is what happened in the, in the first depression in the United States. The run on banks. And we're seeing like scenarios. So check those articles out. Now, there's another article. Will the EU sink Cyprus? And we know that it's not going to hold together. Somehow it's going to separate. And this will give you a lot of information. I just gave you the brunt of the information. And uh, this this is pretty sick over there. This, the people in Cyprus are panicking. The, the government wanted to go in and, and tax them, take some of their money away. I mean, and the, and the people in Cyprus are fighting this. And so let's find out what's going to happen. Because I believe that it's going to filter down and something is going to happen. And we're going to see ten kings that the Lord Jesus talked about. We're going to see the ten toes in the figure show up in the figure. They're kings. We know who they are. They're leaders of nations, ten of them. So it's very, very critical that we watch what's going on in the revived Roman Empire. You don't have to wait for it to arise. It's already here. And all of it is happening at the same time that all the rest of the prophecies are taking place. Now, here's another prophecy. Birds, fish, and animals dying. I'll let you read the scripture about this. There's three different scriptures that warn us about the fish, the birds, and the animals dying. And they're all in the Old Testament. And we're seeing that take place now. And there's another one. The wave of these prolonged deaths baffle Chile to city council. And there's a, a video right here. Let's look at it. discovery off the coast of Chile that has baffled authorities. Thousands of langoustines washed up in central Concepcion province. Beaches have been covered red as the Dublin Bay prawns were found. Investigators are trying to find out what has killed so many crustaceans in this case. It's too early to say whether it is natural death or an environmental crime, but police are not ruling out anything. Officers are due to go out into Coronel Bay to work out the sea temperature electric conductivity, and most importantly, levels of oxygen. In recent years, a number of dead sea creatures have washed up on South America's Pacific coasts. Environmental experts say some possible explanations could be viruses, offshore oil exploration, and poisoned food sources. Here's the bottom line. Did not the Lord tell us to look for this? Are we not seeing this? Now, Bear with me, I'm going to go over to my book, and I'm just going to scroll down. And I'm going to show you how many articles we have posted about the fish, the birds, and the animals dying. And if this is the first time you've seen it, I'm praying that this will blow you away to understand it's happening at the same time as we're seeing everything else take place. So hold on, I'll get my book. All right, just for the sake of time, I'm going to start January 2nd of 2011. But when you go to my website or you Google stats, complete stats, stats, S-T-A-T-S, on birds, animals, and fish dying, you'll see all of it since 2009. But take a look. These are all the reports that I placed in my book about either animals, birds, or the fish dying.
I hope I'm getting your attention. As you can see, it's a very, very long list. Now we're into 2013. And look, look, look what we've seen already this year. And that's it, it ends with today, the 20th of March, 2013. And then I switch back talking about human diseases. And that is an extremely long list of what I've been trying to show you here in God's Word. And there was another one today that you saw here. Now either you can believe it or you can just dismiss it as a major, major coincidence. That wouldn't be wise. Now, let me get into another prophecy, and we're going to be coming to the close here. Luke 21, 25, the Lord tells us to watch for the signs, and where? And the sun, the moon, and the stars. We've been seeing a lot of that lately. And of course, there was an article that came out of watching asteroids, meteors. And this article talks about the, uh, if you will, Armageddon. Look at this. It says, it sounds like Armageddon sequel, yet on Mars instead of Earth. A supermassive doomsday comet is heading toward the planet in 2014, and there's nothing anybody can do about it. Not even Bruce Willis. There was a movie that he made out about going up and uh, blowing this comet up. Now, the comet presents good news, bad news situation for the red planet and for us earthlings as well. NASA says Comet uh, 2013A1, also known as the Comet Sliding Spring, is almost certain to miss Mars on October 19th, 2014. However, there's still a chance, a less than 1 in 600 chance that Mars could be hit due to the remaining uncertainty about the comet's path. That uncertainty is likely to be cleared up over the next few months, eventually resulting in all clear. Now, what I'm telling you is this. The Lord told us to look. Didn't he, didn't he say, look for the signs in the stars? Yes, he did. So whether it hits or not, we're seeing things come out of the, out of the sky that we've, we're not used to. One just hit Russia and killed a lot of people. Looked almost like this, but only it hit the, the city, a building. And so we're seeing a lot of activity in the stars. And all I'm saying is this. All of these things are taking place at the same time, and you can't avoid it. It's here. That's what the Lord said. Our generation, when you shall see all these things, know that it's near, even at the doors. Now, good news. Here's some good news. My friend... The pastor Fiaz from Pakistan is a man of God. And I've partnered up with him, providing him books and Bibles and funds to help him in the ministry work. You see the, these women in Pakistan are holding a Bible. This is a blessing. And so I just wanted to give an update on what's going on with Pastor Fiaz because he is our partner. And he is a man of God on the front lines witnessing the people. When you go to my site, please click the link and read about what's going on. This is a blessing. This is the work of the Lord. He's blessing his ministry, and I want people to see that. Maybe the Lord will touch, 
touch you and see what he's doing and want to get more Bibles into their hands or maybe some of my books. So whatever the Lord does with you, uh, you have my email. God bless you all. Keep your eyes on the sky, not for the comets. We are keeping our eyes in the sky for Jesus Christ because we know the Lord told us when you see these things, look up because your redemption draws nigh. We're not looking for that comet to hit. We're looking for Christ to come out and call away the church. I'm praying that today you would receive Jesus Christ. And if you do, if you receive him as your Savior, you won't be around on this planet when the tribulation begins and you won't see any of these signs, stars that are going to slam into this planet because that's what the Lord reveals to us in the book of Revelation. Please, my friends, I beg of you to consider the salvation that the Lord has given to you today. God bless.